A few months ago, we looked at the new Lexus NX, but that was in 450H form. That is the performance-oriented plug-in hybrid model of this NX. This is the 350, and this is the one that most people will buy. Now, before we have a look at this NX, I have to tell you, on this trip, I have found some of the best driving roads on the planet, and they are the best kept secret. So stick around. I'll tell you where we are a little bit later. For now, let's have a look at this NX, and let's go for a drive. I'm your host, Brian Max, racing driver, lover of driving fast, fun things, and on this channel, you get reviews for drivers from drivers. Now, I am in a fun location on some roads I've never driven, but these have been eye-opening, so stick around. I'll tell you where they are a little bit later in this episode. As for this NX, yes, we did drive the plug-in hybrid version a few months ago, but this is, like I mentioned, the one that people buy. It's the 350 with the four-cylinder turbo charged engine no hybrid technology whatsoever and before we get into what this is like to drive let's have a look at this nx350 in a little more depth mechanically you know what's going on here but the advantage is that this doesn't have any hybrid technology or any batteries to carry along so it is a little bit of a different driving experience than the 450h we drove a little while ago here the engine is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder it makes 257 horsepower and 317 pounds of torque from get this 1700 to 3600 rpm the transmission thankfully is not a cbt it's an eight speed automatic yay like it says on the back it is all wheel drive suspensions based around mcpherson struts at the front a trailing arm rear setup this one is the f sport so it does have adaptive dampers and as as you'd expect it has electrically assisted power steering four wheel disc brakes all around wheels and tires are either 18s or 20s this is an f sport so it has the 20s inside very tech forward very luxurious lots of features lots of technology and of course this thing has lots of safety as you expect from lexus since this is nearly fully equipped it has the 14 inch touchscreen and wireless charging and also since it's a lexus it's extremely well finished and well screwed together curb weight of this nx 350 is about 4,000 pounds and it'll tow about 2,000 pounds if you put a hitch on this thing. Since we are driving a crossover, of course, we're seated quite tall here in this NX. And what that means is you've got great visibility in all directions. What I do like is my interface to the steering wheel and to the pedals. And if we pay attention to the, some of the details in this NX, we might find some influences from that gorgeous LC. There are a couple of things specifically that I've noticed that are influenced by that LC. One is the shifter. It's very similar to the LC500 shifter as well. The shape of the seats in this F-Sport model are also reminiscent of the LC. However, what I do find is with the additional bolstering of these F-Sport seats, they're actually a bit on the narrow side. So no, I'm not a small individual, but I find these seats maybe an 8 out of 10 for me. I'd like them a little bit reshaped on the bottom cushion for sure. The seat back is absolutely perfect. Love the bolstering there as well. But ultimately, when I'm here seated in the NX, I've got this great interface. Love the shape of the steering wheel, the size, the finish. Absolutely spot on. And because, of course, this has an automatic transmission, we do have shift paddles here as well. There is a dead pedal if you do need to support yourself if you are enjoying yourself in the corners like I am doing today. The ergonomics are a mix of traditional Lexus as well as modern Lexus. The traditional Lexus is that everything's easy to find, everything's within easy reach. And then because this is an upper trim level of this NX350, we've got the big 14 inch touchscreen and that does have some integration of the climate controls in the screen, for example. And I actually don't mind this setup. This interface is perhaps not the most ideal situation. I do run this on Apple CarPlay and speaking of which you can run that either wired or wireless if you so desire there's a wireless charger here so lots of connectivity in this vehicle for whatever phone you have but otherwise it is a bit on the modern side as well as traditional lexus influences for example this drive mode selector we find that up here on some other lexus models like the lc it's down here on this nx but it works in exactly the same fashion as it does in other lexus models 
In terms of spaciousness, even though the seat is relatively high off the floor, there's still a fair bit of headroom, and there's more than enough room in that second row for me to sit behind myself quite comfortably. And then under the hatch, lots of room as well. On this particular trip, I'm traveling with a lot of gear, and I definitely appreciate the split folding rear seats there. I think there is one other option or upper trim level to this NX350 where you can get those seats with a power fold function. That's kind of neat. I really don't need it for my purposes, but it's kind of cool to have if you have a busy family. In terms of its acceleration, apparently this does zero to 60 in six and a half seconds. It'll top out at 127 miles an hour. Not that you ever really would drive that fast in this NX in North America, but that zero to 60 time is a bit deceiving. I think it's because it doesn't really get the perfect launch. This is not optimized for drag strip runs, that's for sure. When you are on the move, you've got that abundance of torque from just off idle to the mid-range, and there always seems to be an abundance of torque. It's always available. Accelerating up to speed, up to freeway speeds, no trouble at all. You might hear it from time to time in this episode, but there is a little bit of engine noise that comes into this cabin. And of course, it's a four-cylinder kind of engine noise, which isn't the most ideal, but it's not that it's rough it just kind of comes through it seems like it's a higher frequency noise what it doesn't translate into is vibration this is a very very smooth engine very smooth drivetrain very much lexus and it's definitely on brand and speaking of the drivetrain love the fact that it's got an eight speed automatic and you can use this in manual mode with the shift paddles on these roads that i'm driving on i'm absolutely using manual mode and it works perfectly for me what we don't find here is quick shifts either up and down the box whether we're in comfort mode sport plus whatever the case is the shifts are not that rapid but this is meant to be a luxury crossover luxury compact crossover that appeals to a lot of people and there's definitely no hard performance oriented edge to this thing still i appreciate Appreciate that there is an eight-speed automatic here because it's so much better than a CVT. I like the fact that it holds gears. I like the fact that shifts are smooth. And I think if you're buying a Lexus NX, you're not looking for something that is completely performance oriented. What I haven't been really able to test is the all-wheel drive system in this NX. Now that may happen tomorrow, before this NX goes back. And if that's the case, I might add a little bit to this episode. So we'll see if I get to drive this in some snow, I'll let you know. I sure did get to drive this in some snow. How about a blizzard for three hours? And this NX was nothing but sure-footed with its all-wheel drive system and, of course, some winter tires. With a modern Lexus, we would expect some advanced driver assist. So, yes, we have adaptive cruise control and a lane keep. It's an active lane keep. I think this will also change lanes. Not that I'm really into letting the car do some of the basic driving functions, but I think it will do that dynamically regular viewers of the show know exactly where i'm going with this so regular viewers feel free to skip this section after you hear this but what we've got here with this nx350 is very much a lexus brand a totally on brand compact luxury crossover for the rest of us what that actually means is we've got dynamics that are oriented towards ride comfort rather than outright handling steering assist in any of the drive modes is very much on the light side so there's not a lot of heft to the steering which you know in day-to-day -day use if you're really not a driving enthusiast and just want to get around in luxury and comfort well this is what you're getting here steering is light makes it easy to park and easy to maneuver but then there's not a lot of feel or feedback that comes through the steering wheel 
at all. Braking, on the other hand, is quite good. Brake power is excellent. Modulation and control, absolutely spot on. And there's a decent amount of feel in this brake pedal. So color me impressed, but braking is, of course, that first line of defense to avoid a crash. And I had to do that earlier today. Braking is excellent in this Lexus, as you would expect from Lexus. Now, the important part of the dynamics has everything to do with the suspension tuning. And what we have here is a suspension that does have adaptive dampers and it's got a decent amount of body and wheel control very impressed in that regard but suspension calibrations are definitely tuned to the soft side without question this is a very softly suspended crossover and it's very much on brand for lexus so this is a very comfortable driving experience very quiet in here as well save for a little bit of engine noise from time to time however what you do need to appreciate and i was surprised there is not much difference with those adaptive dampers if they are controlled by the drive modes now if they are just responding to the road that's fine i don't think they are controlled by the drive modes here i think that might be a drivetrain thing rather than a adaptive damper thing but overall very very comfortable and quiet in here it's very softly suspended certainly on point with what Lexus tries to do and I think what Lexus customers appreciate they're looking for something very comfortable very composed something that does soak up the bumps on rough roads now on these roads what I do find is I'm really not willing to throw this around at its limits but with the drivetrain, with the manual transmission, I'm able to enjoy myself on some of these absolutely fantastic roads in this part of the world. How do you spec yours? Well, from the broader perspective of the NX, you need to decide whether you want a gasoline-powered NX, one with front-wheel drive if you're in the United States, or if you want a hybrid or the plug-in hybrid but this episode is about this nx350 and in terms of spec yours this isn't too bad this is nearly fully equipped as tested with all of these desirable options and features this is about forty-eight thousand dollars us or sixty-one thousand dollars canadian the one thing for me though is this red line red paint i had no idea lexus would put such a bold color on this NX and as you've seen throughout this episode it is absolutely stunning especially in this scenery it's absolutely fantastic I do think in terms of specking yours you kind of want to fill it with features and options because that is the best way to enjoy this NX My verdict, well, for starters, who doesn't like a compact luxury crossover with a ton of features and technology? This NX350 definitely ticks that box for me. In terms of fuel consumption, I'm gonna report on my numbers. Your numbers will be better, and I'm sure the official numbers are significantly better, but as you've seen, these roads are amazing, and I have been enjoying my drive, not chasing fuel consumption numbers. So to report on them, I'm getting about 19 miles per gallon or 12.8 liters per 100 kilometers for my Canadian friends, and your numbers will definitely be better. I am very much guilty of using the throttle pedal on these great roads, and it's been an extremely enjoyable drive. As for this NX, well, this is in a tough spot. There's so much competition in this segment. We drove the BMW X1 not too long ago, that all new X1, very, very impressive. But I think if you're looking at something to keep for the long term, you definitely want to look at something with the Lexus badge. Thanks for hanging out with me today and having a look at this 2023 Lexus NX350. And as promised, I'm going to tell you exactly where we are. I am on Vancouver Island in British Columbia, Canada, for you American friends. And I am about an hour's north of Victoria. And the roads out here are amazing. I think they are the best kept secret in North America. And regular viewers of the show know that I drive all over North America, I've driven all over the world. And these are some of the best roads I have experienced anywhere. This is absolutely the best kept secret. So if you live out here, I'm definitely jealous. If you can get out here and get a fun car out here, I think you can spend several days enjoying 
building some amazing roads. Anyway, thanks again for watching the episode. And if you enjoyed this, you're not new to YouTube, you know what to do. Smash the subscribe button, turn on your notifications, like this video, and as always, sharing is caring. So please share this episode with your friends, especially on Reddit, because on Reddit, they really need to see reviews for drivers from drivers. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you want to support the channel, please hit up our merch store. Links here, links below. Lots of great stuff for driving enthusiasts like us, including our very popular line of Save the Manuals merch. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again next time. And remember, cars don't understeer by themselves, not even Lexus compact luxury crossovers. What is wrong with you people? I literally almost crashed into them. Maybe they were out there smoking weed like they do in this part of the world and couldn't see a bright red Lexus. Who knows?